Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and red or Jeskai color to reanimator deck, although we're not planning to reanimate creatures in this build, instead we want to bring back either one with multiverse or portal to Phyrexia. The 8 mana enchantment says we can look at the top card of our library at any time and play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, and then once during each of our turns we also get to play a spell for free either from our hand or from the top of our library. So the ideal sequence is to bring back back one with a multiverse and then cast another free one with a multiverse or maybe a free portal to Phyrexia which is the actual win condition in the deck since we don't really have many creatures to close out the game. Instead portal to Phyrexia a nine mana artifact when it enters makes the opponent sacrifice three creatures and then at the beginning of our upkeep we get to reanimate a creature from any graveyard and put it onto the battlefield under our control. So hopefully the opponent has a few creatures in their deck that we get to remove and then reanimate and then we can essentially beat the opponent with their own cards. Now if the opponent doesn't have any creatures, maybe they're playing a pure control deck or red-white tokens may not have any actual creatures to return, then we still have Zergo and Ojutai as a backup plan. This 4-4 flyer has haste, comes down with hexproof as long as it entered this turn, so we can play it, immediately hit the opponent, and then we get to impulse, look at the top three, put one in hand, and then we get to return a dragon that dealt damage to the opponent back to our hand. So that way we can put Zergo and Ojutai back into the safety of our hand so it's not exposed to an opposing sunfall which might exile it for instance otherwise we won't be able to bring it back with our portal to Phyrexia and then after attacking the opponent a few times with Azurgun Ojutai we can eventually close out the game. Not a great plan but at least it's nice to have a backup plan in mind against creatureless decks. And then how do we bring back our one with a multiverse and portal? We've got two main ways. One is repair and recharge, which just returns an enchantment artifact or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield. We also get to make a power stone token, which has a little bit of synergy here, as it can maybe pay to cast a portal to Phyrexia or to activate some abilities. And it's also a token we can sacrifice to our torch the tower. And then the second way we have of bringing those back is a builder's talent, and that's the card we're really building around here. A two mana class enchantment starts out by making a wall token useful against aggro to soak up some damage then on level 2 for just one mana we can occasionally get some additional plus one counters and then on level 3 for an additional five mana we get to return target non-creature non-land permanent from our graveyard to the battlefield so that's how we get back or one with a multiverse and a portal to Phyrexia and that's also where those power stone tokens that we might get from a repair and charge or from a stern lesson can also help activate the builder's talent so that can also pay for the level 3 for instance and then of course we still need to put one with a multiverse and portal to Phyrexia in the graveyard. We've got some surveil lands that might help, but otherwise we're mainly discarding them from hand with our stern lesson. Draw to end discard, making a power stone token. We've got three steps ahead, which we're mainly using as a draw to discard in the early game. In the mid to late game we'll have enough blue mana where we can consistently use it as a counter spell as well, and can also create a token that's a copy of our artifact, so it can also make an additional copy of our portal to Phyrexia even at instant speed, so that can also be pretty sweet. And then another great discard outlet plus sweeper is the ill-timed explosion, which will also deal a lot of damage if we discard an 8 or 9 mana card, so this is also perfect for this type of strategy. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some additional removal against aggro, Torja Tower, great against uh, red decks with lots of creatures that deal damage when they die. We've got a braid, can also be an answer to artifacts, and get lost also an answer to enchantments. And then Lightning Helix can gain additional life against aggro, which is also useful. And then in addition to ill-timed explosion, we also have two copies of Brotherhoods and as another sweeper that can also deal with various artifacts. And then a Zergo and Ojutai, as we mentioned, can be a fine turn 5 play against aggro as a way to kind of take over and find more answers, but ideally it's just a backup plan for those grindy matchups where the opponent doesn't have many creatures. And then the mana base has lots of dual lands to fix our colors, Fabled Passage with two of each basic as well. So lots of mana fixing, but our deck is also quite demanding since we want red and white early, double red for Brotherhood's End, eventually double blue for three steps ahead, and then lots of white mana for Builder's Talent leveling up and for Repair and Recharge. So we definitely need the color fixing, so I didn't have room for any utility lands that only make colorless mana. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand, just missing our payoff card that we're trying to put in the graveyard. Ideally, maybe draw it with our ill-timed explosion. But we've got some good mana, 
some early blockers and interaction against aggro. Facing red. Haven't seen Mishra's Foundry in a while since most of the red aggro decks don't have room for it. I think we'll keep up the Lightning Helix for Slick Shot. And we might want to Helix it before it attacks in case they have Dreadmoss Ire to give it two extra toughness. Upside of waiting is that they might commit a Monstrous Rage. So, yeah, maybe waiting would have been fine here. And then instead of dealing three in the middle of combat, we would wait until end of turn. Opponent's gonna let it go. And now we could play Builder's Talent and level up, or keep up three steps ahead. Since we have the explosion coming up, I'm fine just leveling up the talent. And then make sure we don't trust the auto-tapper. And then by fetching for an island, we don't have to take damage to cast our double blue spell. Opponent's got Squee. Can block that. So definitely feels more like the old school mono red. And Portal to Phyrexia was a perfect draw. So, yeah. Can ill-timed explosion now. Next turn bring back Portal. And start reanimating the opponent's creatures. And then get rid of a pain land. And then three steps ahead can also be used to copy our portal to Phyrexia, even at instant speed. So we can use that as an additional removal spell instead of as a counter spell. Opponent gets in with Mishra's Foundry, that's acceptable. And they've got a Might of the Meek to draw a card. And Zergon Ojitai is actually not bad either. Yeah, maybe since our opponent didn't present any creature for Portal, we can wait and just play Zergon Ojitai in the meantime. And then I'll leave it on the battlefield. Our opponent's gonna struggle to deal 4 damage to it. And find Torsha Tower versus Ill-Timed Explosions probably the pick. I guess a Braid also has some merit since it can destroy the Foundry without needing to deal 3 damage to it. Although... I think I torch a tower since that way I can repair and recharge and torch a tower next turn. Leave Zergo in play, let them deal with it. And then our portal to Phyrexia can also bring back Zergo no Jutai. Opponent actually has the frenzy, but requires their entire turn. So yeah, now I'm okay. Just uh, bringing back portal. Keeping torch a tower available. And then next turn we can maybe copy the portal. So we'll wait for the opponent to maybe tap out, otherwise I'll take two. Since I don't want to run into Monstrous Rage, although I guess we can also sacrifice the Power Stone to deal three damage. But now it's safe. So bring back our own Zergonojitai, our one-off creature. And no need to level anything else up. Find one with a multiverse, which we're not too far from hard casting. And for now, just pass a turn. Can cast three steps ahead with multiple modes, maybe discarding one with a multiverse, and then we can bring it back with Builder's Talent. Case of the Crimson Pulse. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I can counter and then draw and discard. Discard one with Multiverse. Bring back Squee. I'll level up. Get a free one with Multiverse, which casts another one with Multiverse. Attack, and then Lightning Helix is just game here. Sweet, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Missing something big to discard to the ill-timed explosion to set up our builder's talent. But at least we can have a wall in the meantime to help protect us. And we seem to be up against the rabbits. So the ill-timed explosion is going to be great. For now, happy to play builder's talent. And then... At most, this will be a 3-3, so we can still take it out. I guess if we don't draw something big to discard to the explosion, it may not be the best board wipe. Opponent with a 2-2 might caller. Found a repair and recharge. So now the plan is probably to abrade the quest caller. And then I can still level up Builder's Talent or Torture Tower. If we want to play it extra safe. Because yeah, I'm not in a hurry to level up Builder's Talent. So... Yeah, let's just pass a turn. Don't expect any protection spells at instant speed from our opponents. And this way... We get to take out Might Caller and a Braid Quest Caller. And our opponent does not get to scry. Now with three tokens, they can still do some pretty powerful things. But now the ill-timed explosion doesn't need a super expensive card to be effective. Although one with a multiverse is probably what we want to discard anyway. And then we found a untapped white source, so we can repair and recharge. And then we should be able to take over with one with a multiverse. And can even save myself one damage. And then the Power Stone is also useful in using our activated abilities, such as leveling up our class. Alright, Repair and Recharge on top, so nothing too exciting coming up here. Haven't found our portal to Phyrexia, which is what we really need. And our opponent gets to hit us for at least 7. So if we miss for a turn, we could be dead. Another recruit, opponent's going for it. And even Portal to Phyrexia is not necessarily game over now. Alright, well, let's put that to the test. Can play a free land. At least the Mentor is going to shrink if they sack some creatures here. So might see them just sacrifice all the Paw Patch recruits and offspring. Hmm. That's interesting. There's another portal on top. So for now, just level this up once. And pass a turn. Could also shuffle with Fabled Passage, but I think I'm happy with another portal on top. What are the chances that our opponent kills me next turn? They would need two more quest callers, and then they're still only attacking me for eight. So we should be safe. I guess our opponent maybe wanted to paw patch since they know about all our instant speed removal and the extra plus one counters could come in handy. And our opponent's got another one with offspring. Okay, so another portal will leave them with one paw patch recruit. And we get to bring back the opponent's quest caller here. So we also have a blocker and now a lightning helix should seal the deal. But play portal first. So Helix that's paying two mana. Now I could shuffle away towards the tower if I'd like, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a somewhat clunky hand. Without a discard outlet is the main problem, but as soon as I can draw and discard, we should be good to go. And then in the meantime, we have talent and a braid to help our defense, so we'll try it. Should probably just fetch Mountain right away, although it's possible I'll end up needing blue mana for one of my card draw effects. Spyglass Siren, so... Opponent on maybe an Artifact deck, blue-green, could also be a Convoke deck, although typically don't see Basic Island in the Jeskai build. 
Uh, Archive is a good fine play here. I don't think I need to play Talent right now. And an ill-timed explosion is a discard outlet and removal, so that's kind of perfect here. Opponent is blue-white, after all. And a Mockingbird to copy Siren. So they've got lots of permanence in play. They might be playing cards like Regal Bunnycorn. Playing Talent and leveling up is the most mana efficient here. And then, yeah, kind of just hoping to draw an untapped land for ill-timed explosion to clean up next turn. Opponent's got a Zoetic Glyph, so we'll chump. And at the very least, I can abrade their map token next turn, but yeah, ill-timed explosion is going to be the better answer. And then one with a multiverse, certainly discarded. What's the second card I get rid of? Maybe a Zergon Ojitai, since Portal can bring it back. And then keep the abrade, since I may need interaction next turn while I look for a fifth land. Opponent found an Inspector off their Discover and has another Zoetic Glyph, so yeah, they're keeping up the pressure. We're 11, but we do have double abrade for removal here. Now the main concern is our opponent having enchantment removal for my Builder's Talent, so I need to maybe dig for another reanimation effect if that's the case. At least the Counterspell is not too relevant here, since we already have our enchantment in play. Let our opponent attack, and then attempt to destroy their artifact. And that works. And our opponent found a Warden of the Inner Sky. That also happens, take one. And then ideally our opponent taps out here. But they're not going to. Alright, so if they do have... Removal for Builder's Talent that they're keeping up, or maybe a uh, Tishana's Tidebinder could also make sense. They can counter the trigger from Builder's Talents, so I don't think I braid the Warden right now. So we'll see if they have a Tidebinder. They don't. Or they waited for this trigger to counter that one, which I guess would have worked. Now we'll just try another one with a Multiverse for free. Chain those together. How about another one? And then a free portal to Phyrexia off the top. And there's another one waiting for us. And that resolves. So not sure what our opponent's sitting on here at instant speed. Maybe just sacking the clue. Alright, they do have a fairy mastermind after all. That's beatable. Now we can start reanimating the opponent's creatures. So glad they weren't a more dedicated blue-white control deck with Jace as their win condition to mill us, since then we just need to rely on Zerg and Ojutai to win the game, which usually doesn't get there. They can also get in with a Restless Anchorage if they'd like, hit us for four, but then next turn we can keep up a braid and we should be able to take over pretty quickly. So that's what they do. And what do we want to return? Maybe a Spyglass Siren as a flying blocker for Fairy Mastermind. Builder's Talent we can cast for two mana. Don't need to waste my free spell on it. And the Siren's also going to grow quite large. Alright, I guess another free portal is acceptable. And our opponent has seen enough, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We do not have white mana, so I don't think I can keep. This is a little bit better. Still missing a discard outlet for one with a multiverse. But at least we've got early interaction aplenty. Facing red-white, so this could be the tokens deck which is a pretty bad matchup, just because our opponent doesn't have any creatures in their deck for us to reanimate. So Zergon Ojitai is basically our only win condition. Fine using Torch right now, could also keep it for Bivouac, but that's not going to be relevant until later. 
play Talents, next turn Parlor, level up, and look for some of our draw and discard effects. Luckily they didn't have Orobrask's Forge on three. We're not looking to destroy our Builder's Talent, perhaps, with a Get Lost. At least they're not destroying one with a Multiverse, but uh, now we do need to find a different reanimation effect. And then do I activate map first or surveil? I guess we do actively want to look for a land, so may as well surveil and then maybe draw into it. So at least we're hitting our land drops now. Get lost an answer to the opponent's caretaker's talent. And then, yeah, we need to avoid playing Ojutai into their removal, so we can never leave it on the battlefield for Sunfall to exile it. I think I keep the explosion as just a draw two. And no need to use the map token now. Opponent activates Mirax, that's fine, we can potentially wipe those away if we want to. So yeah, this game's gonna take a while. Cast the explosion. And we did not draw a reanimation effect, so maybe we're just building up towards 8 mana and try and hardcast one with a multiverse. So I'll decline, play tap line and pass. Might see a lightning helix finish off our wall. Nope. Okay, well, um, again, we're not really in a hurry. Can cast explosion, see what we find, and then reconsider whether to discard or not. And yeah, once again, didn't really draw anything relevant, so I'll hang on to my one with a multiverse. Can maybe helix a mite so we don't take too much poison. And if I do it now, we don't play into fountain port drawing a card in response. Opponent could torch the tower with their own token to deny the life gain, which is maybe what they're considering. Opponent lets it go. So take one poison. And uh, could try to explore here. Portal to Phyrexia, I'll keep on top. And then next turn I can cast it off one with a multiverse to clean up. Now our wall can actually eat one of their my tokens if they attack into it, so they'll need to remove it. And there's a get lost, perfect, so now they're not using it on one with a multiverse. Question is whether we want to get lost back to deny one poison. I don't think I do. Our opponent will get to draw with Fountain Port, but that's fine. And then I'll thin out the deck here, even though we could also save Fabled Passage as a potential shuffle effect. The one with the multiverse. If there's a portal on top, I can immediately cast it. Otherwise, I think I cast the one from hand over going for the explosion. So our opponent's got a window to attack with a bivouac. They did not use fountain port to draw, so they're maybe going for a carrot cake now. And yeah, we need to find Zurgon Ojutai, since that's how we actually win the game. And we need to have enough time to attack five or six times with it, since our opponent also has some life gain. Bivouac gets busy. Yeah, 
if our opponent had an Orbrask's Forge in play all along, we would have been dead a long time ago. So that's why this matchup is not particularly good for us. Cast a 3 mana stern lesson, since we might find more expensive spells. Like another one with a multiverse. Discard land. Cast this for free. And then Lightning Helix I could uh, cast now on the Rabbit token. Could also go upstairs, which I don't hate. Maybe for free, since there's nothing to repair and charge back. I guess there is a Builder's Talent. Maybe that's actually the play. Cast this for free on Builder's Talents. And then I can level it up once. And then pass. And then next turn we'll keep digging for Zurgo and Ojutai. Opponent finally has the Caretaker's Talents, but we have the Get Lost to answer it. That's destroyed. And as you've noticed, if you destroy it in response to leveling up, the second mode doesn't actually happen. Opponent goes exploring. Finds a lockdown. Could answer some of our tokens, but opponent says no. Could have used Helix on the token as well in response. Now I think I'll block if they want to torch a tower. They should wait for after damage. Opponent even sacking the token so they could scry. But now I can Helix the rabbit to keep my wall so we don't have to worry about Mirex as much. Alright, so... Play Parlor. Another one with a multiverse cannot be bad. Grow the wall. And alright, our opponent concedes. I'm glad, because it could have taken us a while to find Zergonojutai to actually close out the game. And uh, yeah, luckily for us, our opponent didn't have the patience. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not exciting, but I think it's still keepable. Can just kind of play a control role. Double Braid Explosion. If we were up against, let's say, Boros Tokens, having access to the uh, Double Braid for an opposing Orbrask Forge is important. For now, I guess we're not in a hurry to play Fabled Passage, even though we could go tap land on turn one. Probably gonna end up fetching a second blue source. Opponent on Mouse Aggro with a turn 2 challenger. Could play a Builder's Talents and maybe let them overextend into an ill-timed explosion. Could maybe a Braid first and then next turn Talent level up and let them make the first move. That opponent trying a cheeky House Mouse on challenger. I think it's worth responding even though there's a chance your opponent also has a Monstrous Rage, gets this up to 4 toughness regardless. But I gotta try now. Alright, that worked. Opponent did actually find a Monstrous Rage with a Valiant trigger, so they still got a little bit of value. But the uh, adventure fizzled, so they don't get access to the second house mouse. Still take five. And the house mouse cannot be blocked by creatures with power three or greater, but a wall's gonna work just fine. So I think that's the play. And then level up. And then next turn we can ill-timed explosion. Discarding portal. And then at 5 mana bring it back. So the wall is more than happy to block. And Puns has a nettle guard which can actually destroy our enchantment. That's too bad. Actually found another one. This might be a reaction to the Boros Tokens deck with lots of artifacts and enchantments worth destroying. Opponent has to respond now. And I don't have to discard my 9 or 8 mana card, I could just discard a 2 drop just to clear House Mouse and keep my wall. Is that what we want to do? 
I would still have to discard a second card. So yeah, it's kind of awkward here not to discard a expensive card. So let's just go portal and one with a multiverse anyway. Could also just discard one with a multiverse key portal in hand to cast as a follow-up. And get rid of another explosion. Although we do still need to draw a land 5 as well. Swordmaster with offspring. And we did find a land. So if I want to set up my one with a multiverse, I would have to play talent level up this turn and be shields down on a braid. With an 0-4 wall, we're relatively likely to survive the incoming attack. Even safer would be to cast the explosion and then next turn talent level up with a braid backup. I think we can afford to play it safe here since we're not really in a hurry. And then I guess we'll have to let go of a two drop at least. So if I want to keep portal in hand, that's fine. We can do this or maybe play the white source so we don't have to pay life to leveling up next turn. And I can still keep up torture tower instead of a braid. This seems fine. Can even sacrifice the wall to torture tower if needed. But let's go to challenger. Two cards still in hand. And we will be leveling up here as opposed to keeping up stern lesson. Although I guess if I stern lesson I get the power stone which also lets me activate builder's talent. Twice potentially so I guess we'll just uh, keep up our three mana instant instead. Although now I'm kind of committed to casting this turn lesson as opposed to torture tower. Opponent now going for a rabbit gnaw which triggers valiant and prowess. Could try to torture tower and response hoping they don't have another pump spell. If I sacrifice my wall I can deal three damage so we potentially beat another prowess trick. But if it's pump stuffness then it's still bad. Currently Rabbit Gnaw would actually take out the wall since it also pumps power by one. So yeah, maybe change of plan here and torch the tower anyway. With a bargain. Sacking the wall. That works. And the three steps ahead could be okay, but if we find an untapped land I can bring back one with a multiverse next turn, which is probably better. Opponent found another Monstrous Rage. So in hindsight, leveling up the talent would have worked out better. But we found a Repair and Recharge, which will get the job done as well. And then we left a Portal to Phyrexia in hand, which I could cast for free, or I could cast a free Lightning Helix, which gains me life, which is actually better here, I think. And then next turn I can cast a free portal, assuming they don't have another way to destroy enchantments. And our opponent packs it in, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a hand that's got removal, discard and payoff, plus a way to get it back. So we just need to sort out our mana. Let's try and look for another land. Archive will do. So we can play that, keep up Torture Tower. And then Passage. Going for a second red source, most likely. Our opponent mono green with a curator survives our two damage. And then I guess we'll just play land and pass. Can get mountain next turn and just cast an explosion to wipe the board. But yeah, curator is graveyard hate as well, so that could be interfering with our plan of bringing back portal. Opponent plotting. A trailblazer in the meantime. That's acceptable. So if we don't want to go for ill-timed explosion, I can just brother its end. In hindsight, playing the Fabled Passage last turn, getting Mountain, would have allowed me to get a second Mountain and keep up Torja Tower after casting Brother its End. So that actually would have allowed me to take out Trailblazer before they draw too many more cards with it. But that's okay. Yeah, again, we could have gone for Explosion, Discard Portal, and then bring it back. But then if our opponent just goes Curator Activates, they can potentially foil our plan. Opponent's got another Trailblazer. So they get to draw. I have three mana left. 
and a scrap shooter, also an answer to our artifact. Well, now the ill-timed explosion looks a bit better. And then I'll fetch for mountain right now, or we could draw into a tap land that I want to play. Alright, so portal goes, and maybe a lightning helix. Helix is a cleaner answer to curator, admittedly. How many types do we have? Land, sorcery, about to be artifact and instance, so that could also be worth keeping in mind. But uh, get lost seems like the more versatile answer. And then we can still torch if needed. And next turn bring back portal, hopefully. Involving adaptive resolves. Times two. So as long as I don't play curator, I'm happy. A rookie is acceptable. So three creatures that will die to a portal to Phyrexia, pretty much. Now they could still have a scrap shooter to destroy it, but then we'll just bring it back. And the good news is that there's at least plenty of creatures for us to bring back. And I'm kind of liking the trailblazers, so next turn we can start drawing with those. But yeah, our opponent has already seen enough, they're just too far behind. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Got a reanimation effect, a discard outlet, and a payoff. And I'll go for archive since we may need double blue soon. And three steps ahead is good, but let's maybe look for some creature removal. As we're up against turn one hardfire hero. I'll make a wall. And next turn, we could already three steps ahead. Repair and recharge means I don't necessarily have to level up the builder's talent in the meantime. But not actually with a turn two manifold mouse. So that's already hitting us for four. I guess I'll wait a turn to soak up. Well, I guess we're still only soaking up four damage at most. And maybe I'll draw a sweeper like Brotherhood's End. Alright, so what's next? I can just pass, keep up three steps ahead. I'm taking at least six from the Heartfire Hero, so that's a lot. But I pretty much need to draw into a removal spell here, since I'm not going to survive until turn five otherwise. So yeah, I guess three steps ahead it is. Hopefully they don't force us to counter anything, and they just commit another creature to the board, which we can sweep up with an ill-timed explosion, for instance. That's fine. Hardfire Hero grows. And no blocks. Opponent's going for it. Might of the Meek. One extra power. Alright, damage happens. We take 11. And I just get a draw to end this card and hope to find an answer. A braid sort of counts. And what do we discard? Just one with a multiverse. And Torja Tower. Alright, so now we have more tools. Torja Tower exiling Hardfire Hero is pretty important. I may need to give up the Builder's Talent, which is fine. And then I can still a braid and then just play a tapped land here. Question is, do I go for it now or do I wait for the opponent to make the first move? It's going to be tricky if they're holding a pump spell, but I guess with Village they cannot cast it. So this is maybe the safest window to go for this. Torture Tower with Bargain. Sacking the Talents. And then another Braid. I guess could be alright, so next turn we bring back one with a Multiverse and then we can cast a free removal spell. It's no portal to Phyrexia, admittedly, but it's better than nothing. And then now I can maybe wait for the opponent to take their turn and a braid and response accordingly. Challenger, they would trigger Valiant with a Manifold Mouse. So that would have double strike. Question is, do we take out the Manifold Mouse or try and take out Challenger? 
I think Manifold Mouse is the move here. Although, do I die to Monstrous Rage regardless? Because I would be at 8. These hit for 3, for 5, plus 3 is 8. So I can beat Monstrous Rage if I go for Manifold Mouse. So I guess I'll let it resolve. That triggers on Challenger, enables Valiant, and let them make the first move. Because at least this Valiant trigger doesn't increase toughness. So no blocks. And luckily our opponent makes the first move. So I can abrade on response. Although I guess uh, Might of the Meek doesn't increase toughness, so that wouldn't necessarily have killed us. Alright, so we do get to untap, it seems, at 5 life. I'll repair back one with a multiverse, see what's on top. A land. And then I got a braid now. And hopefully don't die to the Swiss Spear, which is still very likely. So that's where a Lightning Helix over a braid would have made a world of difference. Bones got the Slick Shots, Swiss Spear. And they have a Pump Spell or a Shock. Alright, GG's. So close one here. Couldn't quite stabilize the way we wanted to. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keepable hand. Missing a way to discard the portal to Phyrexia. But in the meantime, we've got some walls to protect us. Opponent on a green deck. Blue-green, maybe an artifact deck. Nope, up the beanstalk points towards ramp. And we did find an ill-timed explosion. So, a level up. Don't think I need to get lost beanstalk right now. We'll just play another talents. And get a counter here. Hopefully find land for explosion. Opponent is indeed on a teamer ramp deck with the trash tactician. Which we can maybe sweep up here. Alright, so Portal wants to go to the graveyard, and then all land can go. So we will be able to reanimate the Tactician with our Portal at the very least, and our opponent should have more creatures along the lines of Roxanne and Bonnie, so those are also great to reanimate eventually. So no creature to remove with a portal, but I just want to get it going. And if our opponent abrades portal, we have another builder's talent to bring it back. And make your own luck. Alright, so our opponent's definitely going big. Another tactician in exile for next turn. And then we have to consider using Get Lost on Beanstalk before they draw more off of it. Yeah, I guess that's uh, reasonable here. Even though that leaves me maybe without answers for opposing creatures, which is what we actually want to reanimate with Portal. So maybe them drawing with Beanstalk is not that bad. And then we're just going to pass. Now if our opponent is playing cards like uh, Doppelgang, they could potentially just build up their mana and then wait for a big Doppelgang to win the game without running too many creatures into the portal. So yeah, if the game goes long, it doesn't necessarily favor us. Opponent plays Tactician, although they haven't expended any mana yet. And now a Voltborn Tyrants. Well, that's a good one for us to bring back. So we can get lost to the Voltborn Tyrants. And then next turn reanimate it. 
leaving the opponent with a token. But uh, yeah, I guess just the fact that we're bringing back Tyrant is good enough for the opponent. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Missing our combo pieces to really go off. But for now, I guess we'll uh, play Fabled Passage and then, depending on the matchup, either get Mountain or Islands. Uh, against Red, I'll save myself the damage from Shivan Reef, get Mountain for Torcha Tower, which is a good answer to the Heartfire Hero. Found our one with a multiverse, so can use three steps ahead to draw to and discard. And a Manifold Mouse is next. So in this case, I think we just Helix the Manifold Mouse before it triggers. And keep Torcha Tower for Heartfire Hero. Alright, so... Ideally, we get to draw to and discard to hit our land drops. If our opponent plays an extra creature, we can set up our explosion, perhaps. So for now, I'll take one. Opponent plotting a slick shot, so that's not quite what we were hoping for. But I'll still draw two and discard. And that's another one with a multiverse. I guess we'll start there. And another portal to Phyrexia. So our draws haven't quite panned out. If our opponent plays Slick Shot and has pump spells to back it up, Torture Tower is not going to be good enough, and we don't have double blue for three steps ahead. I wonder if I should just main phase three steps ahead in the hopes of drawing into a land. But going shields down if we miss would be pretty bad. So. As long as we don't take lethal, we can maybe dig for a fourth line for the ill-timed explosion. I will let our opponent make the first move. Monstrous Rage on Swiss Spear, and if I try and torch the tower Swiss Spear, they can just cast another spell for prowess to survive it, so that was a good target for them. Anything else? Or do we let damage happen? So that would be nine damage. Still survivable. And we found the land, even an untapped one. That's great. So, in the meantime, portal can go. So I can cast ill-timed explosion. And found two more heavy hitters, so can discard probably both of those. And then we're still looking for one of our reanimation effects. So we'll keep Stern Lesson and Torture Tower. Stern Lesson also making a Power Stone to enable Torture Tower is nice. And our opponent explodes. I guess they didn't have any follow up creatures. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We do have a keepable hand, maybe just missing some earlier plays if we're up against hyper aggro. This might be a little slow, although explosion is a great way to catch up. So we'll see. Turn one swamp and a builder's talent is excellent. So we have to be prepared for discard effects. Keeping another portal doesn't really accomplish much. Good to have it in the graveyard as well. Do they have a turn to Deep Cavern Bat? They do not, so at the very least I can put my Builder's Talent in play. They'll have plenty of removal for the wall token, but that's alright. And then a Liliana Planeswalker could be sort of annoying since we don't have a way of pressuring it as it currently sits. It's gonna be a Preacher instead, that one's fine. For now we can level up and surveil. And then next turn, cast the Explosion. Still need a second white source for Repair and Recharge. Although we might just level up the Builder's Talent all the way. Cut down my token now. And Gix, so I'd love to see more creatures. Not only is the Explosion going to be more effective, but now we have more things to win the game with once we get the portal back. 
And uh, one with a multiverse is now an even more appealing option. So we can discard at least one of those, keep the other in hand to cast for free, and then cast a free portal. So repair and recharge can go. And then untap land for builder's talent. Archfiend is acceptable. Okay. And how about a portal? And now Archfiend could also win us the game. Can uh, repair and recharge back another portal so we can reanimate two creatures per turn. And I don't think Mono Black can really recover from this, but we'll see. Rex and Flash Gorger is quite beatable. Make that two. Alright, so bring back Archfiends. And then Portal's gonna deal quite a bit of damage here. Can cast an explosion, but maybe do a free repair and recharge. And see if that's good enough. Opponent loses for life. Can cast explosion, maybe for four mana. And can keep everything in hand. Play a line of the top, or we can surveil it into the graveyard. And then Lightning Helix I can still cast for free. For now, just play another Builder's Talents. And level that up. Okay. And Gix's command will try and bring creatures back, so we don't get to steal them. Otherwise, double Flash Gorger would have been pretty juicy. And goodbye, Archfiend. So yeah, they bought themselves some time. And gave us fewer targets for Portal, but they still left double Flash Gorgers, so... Those seem good now. A Braid doesn't have a great target. Anything to bring back with another Builder's Talent? Not quite. Alright, so we can just pass a turn. Could also a Braid just to keep digging through the deck. But I think we're fine to just pass. And there's Preacher. Don't really want to exile it with Torsha Tower. But uh, can just take one out. To let the Flesh Gorgers go through. And that should be game. Alright. So that was pretty much the ideal setup. We had our board wipe to stabilize, and then one with a multiverse to go off, and then plenty of creatures to reanimate as we cross the finish line for 14 damage and to rank up to platinum once again. Sweet. So yeah, this uh, Jeskai reanimator style of deck can be pretty strong against creature strategies. We did not run into any pure blue-white control decks that may not have any creatures and that solely rely on Jace as their win condition to mill us to death, so that's obviously going to be a pretty bad matchup. The Boros Tokens deck also not a great matchup, especially if they get an early forge online, and then we're going to struggle to close out the game with just a Zurgun Ojutai as the only creature, so those are some of the harder matchups out there, but we've got a decent plan against aggro, and mid-range creature decks are usually the ideal matchup for us. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!